Hi hey everybody, welcome to our next lecture on the ideas of energy and conservation of energy. Um, so far again we've talked about the idea of kinetic energy, energy due to motion, something that has velocity, has kinetic energy, and we've talked about potential energy, energy due, due to position or sometimes called stored energy. But the first potential energy we discussed was gravitational potential energy. In other words, the stored energy something has when you lift it to a certain height due to the effects of gravity. Today I want to talk about a second type of potential energy. It is called elastic potential energy or sometimes called spring potential energy. You see, whenever you stretch something that's elastic, a spring, a rubber band, anything like that, you're storing some energy up inside of it. And now that doesn't have anything to do with the idea of gravity. It also turns out it doesn't have anything to do with really the idea of mass. So when you stretch and compress these things a certain distance, you're giving them a position, and therefore you're giving them a type of potential energy that we'll call elastic or spring potential energy. Now, one of the things that does affect how much energy you have is something called the elasticity or the elastic constant that this spring or object will have. And we're going to use the symbol K to denote the elastic constant. And the units of the elastic constant are in newtons per meter. Now, what does it really mean? Let's look. Here I have a spring um, that isn't stretched. And over here it says the softness of spring 3. Well, that really means it's elastic constant. So, for example, if I hang 100 grams on it, okay, it causes it to stretch about 10 centimeters. Okay? Now, if... I hang a bigger mass on it, okay. it stretches even four, farther. Notice about 25 centimeters. Okay. So clearly the amount of mass affects how far it's going to stretch. Okay. But if I increase the elastic constant, notice it doesn't stretch as far. So the elastic constant basically tells you how much it takes it to stretch it any distance. A high elastic constant means it won't stretch very much at all, so it's very hard to stretch. A low elastic constant, well, that allows it to stretch a really long distance. Okay. So the elastic constant really has to do with how strong the spring is, how hard it is to stretch. And that in turn is going to relate to how much energy you can store up inside of it. Now, since the energy has nothing to do with the mass, but does have to do with the elastic constant, well, again, we define potential energy as energy due to position. So the other part must be, well, how far you stretch it. And that, in turn, leads to an equation for elastic or spring potential energy, which is 1 half k, the elastic constant, times x squared, x being how far you actually stretch it. So let's look at an example. Here I have two springs one with an elastic constant of 50 newtons per meter and the other with an elastic constant of 25 newtons per meter. Now in each case I'm going to compress them back 10 centimeters. So to begin with I want to know how much elastic potential energy or spring potential energy is in each one. Well, spring or elastic potential energy is 1 half kx squared. So for the first one I have 1 half a k of 50. Now 10 centimeters, if we properly convert that, that's 0.1 meters. And that gives us spring potential energy of 0.25 joules. Of course, all energies are measured in joules, right? Now for the second one, we have 1 half spring constant of 25. Again, the same distance. 0.1 squared, that gives us a potential energy of 0.125 joules. Okay, so basically half, and that makes sense because the spring constant was half. Now, notice I had this little ball at the end of it, which didn't seem to come into play. In other words, the mass of that didn't matter. But let's say after we pull them back with this ball next to it, that we let it go. Well, it's going to extend and push the ball. And guess what it will give that ball? Well, it's going to give it a velocity, and therefore it must give that ball kinetic energy. Well, we already know the idea of conservation of energy, right? So when it was compressed, 
my total energy in each case was spring potential energy. But when I release it, all of that energy converts into kinetic energy of the ball. And so my total energy of the ball becomes all kinetic energy. Well, conservation of energy still applies. Total energy has to equal total energy. So that means that the ball will get a certain velocity. But will it be the same? No, because they have different potential energies. So in the first case, where I had 0.25 joules, that becomes all kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. 20 grams, 0.02 kilograms, I always practice our converting, this out, 25 is v squared, or the velocity of the first one leaves at 5 meters per second. In the case of the second one, where I have 0.125 joules, that's 1 half mv squared, 0.5 v squared, taking the square root of both sides. The velocity of the next one is lower, 3.54 meters per second. Which again makes sense because there was less stored up energy, so therefore less kinetic and less velocity. That's basically how that works. Let's look at another example. In this example, I've got a 60 gram mass that is compressed back against a 4,000 newton per meter spring, 20 centimeters from rest. I'm going to let it go, and it's going to go flying along, and then it's going to go up this hill to some sort of maximum height. Now, in addition to how high it's going, I'd like to know how fast it's going just before it goes up the hill. So remember when we deal, dealt with conservation of energy, we were asking ourselves questions? Well, now we've got a third question to ask ourselves. So our questions are, do I have height? Do I have motion or velocity? And now, do I have a compressed spring? Well, right, let's look. Point one, the beginning. Do I have height? No. Do I have motion? No, it's being pulled back at rest. Do I have a compressed spring? Yes. So my total energy here must all be spring potential energy. Here at point two, do I have height? No. Do I have motion? Yes, it's sliding along the ground. Do I have a compressed spring? No, it's not even touching the spring anymore. So my total energy here has to be all kinetic. Now, point three, we're assuming it comes to its maximum height, so it has to stop when it reaches maximum height. So do I have height? Yes. Do I have motion? No, it comes to a stop. Do I have a compressed spring? No, the spring is not even anywhere nearby. So my total energy here must all be gravitational potential. But then, of course, conservation of energy says total energy equals total energy equals total energy. So if I want my velocity at point 2, well, I can say my total at 1 equals my total at 2. Now, my total energy at point 1 is made of spring potential, 1 half kx squared, 1 half, k is 4,000, x is 20 centimeters, 0.2 meters squared, and so my total energy at point 1 is 80 joules. Now, but here's the nice thing, that means that's my total energy everywhere. So, at point 2, my total energy is all kinetic energy. 1 half mv squared. Don't you love conservation of energy? I know that I have 80 joules of kinetic energy because it's my total energy. My mass, 60 grams, 0.06 kilograms. And I end up with a velocity of about 51.6 meters per second, which is really, really high, but it's because my mass is low and my spring constant is really high. Point three. Well, my total energy at 1 also has to equal my total energy at 3. And my total energy at 3 is all gravitational potential energy, which is mgh. But I already know that I have 80 joules of total energy, so that part's easy. I have my mass, 0.06. Gravity is 10. 
and that gives me a height of 133.3 meters. Again, pretty high, but it's because my mass was low and my spring constant was really high. And that's basically all there is to it. Elastic or spring potential energy is simply another type of potential energy, but the law of conservation of energy still applies in the same way. Spring potential energy is based on the elastic constant, how strong the spring is, and then how far it is either stretched or compressed from its rest position, unlike gravitational en potential energy that is based on a mass and gravity and height, spring potential energy is based on elastic constant and distance, stretched or compressed. And that's it. See you next time.